Now, let's get straight into it. Doris, I want to find out from you. Um, can you give us some insight into the uh, buy-to-let strategy? Yes, so a, a buy-to-let strategy, Cornelius, it's, it's normally the strategy that when you are a first-time investor, you want to start there. Why? Because most of the buy-to-let uh, uh, properties that you can find, you can buy, for example, in a complex where there's already a body corporate that runs most of the, um, of the maintenance and things that you know, a first-time investor might not know. So when you start investing in property, you can start with the buy to let where you buy apartments, you can buy townhouses, um, and most of them you can still buy under a million rent. You know, you can find areas where you can still buy for 500,000, 700,000. So that when you learn, mm. you don't learn with big monies. You know, you start by with small monies, and then you can learn from there before you grow your property portfolio. Great. Uh, did you say anything you want to add there? Yeah, just to add there on what Doris has said. And it's very much important, again, to actually run the numbers. Even as you buy or use the buy-to-let strategy, it's always important to run the numbers to find out whether you are going to make or have a positive cash flow when you invest in that property. Because a lot of people, when they buy, more especially first-time home buyers, they just buy without running the numbers only to find out that that property, they're, actually, uh, they're not actually making money. They're subsidizing somebody to live in that property. Even when you buy for a buy-to-let, you need to make sure that you get a positive cash flow. Now this is very I want to I want us to just talk a bit about this positive cash flow negative cash flow because you often see ads from developers and real estate agents saying in the first year you only pay in so much <laughs> great investment but is it a great investment if so think about it this way so any business if you were going to start a business and you realize that for the first seven years of that business you're going to be making losses would you go into that business absolutely not exactly it's the same thing with property when you are buying it for rental purposes you want to do it as an investment when we're talking about it means you must have a return on your money and unfortunately in most of this especially with the new developments the cost is so high that when you have to take out uh, your bond the rental amount does not m might cover the bond but it does not cover costs like levies um your rates and taxes so you find that you have to subsidize like dunisani has said you know that that um development for the first three to seven years and sometimes you don't even know with the current market you know uh, the it's quite unlikely that you'll be able to get big escalation for your rental to actually even eventually cover all your costs now dunisani i want to find out from you uh, and I know uh, understanding the numbers is a long exercise, but can you break down for us very, very easy how, t what, what, what should people consider that would get them to a positive mm. cash flow? Um, look, Cornelius, with what Doris has said in terms of uh, home buyers buying in a complex, because obviously when you buy a property within a complex, there are going to be costs such as levies, which you need to consider. There are also costs such as rates and taxes that you need to also consider when you buy that property. And again, other hidden costs are your management cost for the, for the property that you're buying. And in most cases, when you buy a property from, for example, your estate agents, they will hardly tell you that there will be those type of costs. They will only tell you of one cost, which is what? Which is the bond and they don't actually tell you of other costs. So you need to make sure that before you buy any property, you take care of those costs. You actually calculate those costs even before you buy that property. Because in most cases, a lot of investors, they only find out of those costs after they've actually purchased the property. So it's very important before you even buy, know of all those costs. You can get that information from the body corporate. They are more than willing to give you. And also from the municipality, just to understand the rates and taxes. You can also ask for the state from the current owner or from the estate agents which they will actually be more than willing to give you that information. Now Doris um, I would imagine it's also important to understand what rental income you can yes. fetch in a particular area because yes. that's that will that will determine whether you will positive or negative cash flow after you've deducted all those costs. Do you want to chat to us about that? Yes so you have to make sure that the, the rental in that area is able to 
cover all your costs. So if he, if he doesn't, that means you have to negotiate a lower price when you buy. So you must say, okay, if I take a property for 500,000 and the rental is six, then that means maybe my bond at this rate will be 4,000 rent. So I must make sure that I negotiate you know, a lower price to make sure that, I'm, that my rental will be able to cover my bonds. If you don't know what the rental are, you can find out from the letting agents. Another um, uh, maybe area where people can get more reliable information, you can buy a report from TPN that shows you how good the rental is in that area and what is the percentage of people that actually do pay their rental on time or the per percentage of people that, that have a good tenants, what we call good tenants. Buy the reports before you invest. You know, it's not, it's not very expensive. So just buy for, for whatever area, go to TPN .co.za and then run a suburb report, run a rental report for that area you want to invest in and you are able to get the average rental for that area. In other words, do your homework. Do your homework before you buy. And uh, so all your costs, just, just to sum up for people, all your costs must come out of the rent that you get. 100%. And then you must still be left with a profit at the end of every month. If you're not left with a profit, it's not an investment. No. 100%. <laughs> it's <laughs> it's <laughs> completely not an investment because how can you say you are investing if you are still going to subsidize? Mm. Look at it this way, uh, Cornelius. Imagine having to pay somebody to live in your property that you call it mm. an investment. Sure. That's not investment in my view. That's like being desperate in other ways or not knowing what you are doing you should make money from day one in property meaning as long as that property is giving you a positive cash flow it doesn't matter even if it's 10 bucks or 50 as long as it's positive as long as it doesn't requires you to add anything at the end of the month you are growing okay we've unfortunately run out of time but i just quickly before we go just get one last piece of advice from each of you for someone who wants to buy a buy-to-let property in this current market. Uh, Dunisani, can I start with you? Well, I can tell you, Conrad, there's quite a lot of opportunities. This is actually the right time to be buying because there are bargains out there. But what is very important for you to do is to run those numbers. Don't fall into this trap because you hear the words saying there are a lot of bargains. You just assume that everything is a bargain or whatever property that is presented to you is a bargain. You need to make sure that you run your numbers and understand those numbers and make sure that you work on your return on investment even before you buy. And also have a strategy that will tell you that for any property in terms of rental, do you want to you wanna have, do you want to make 500? or a thousand like Doris has said there are times whereby if things changes will you still be able to make money after three years if for example the interest rate goes up by uh, three four percent will I still be making money you need to think ahead of time before you even buy that property so that's the best thing that you can do for yourself run those numbers get the worst case scenario by doing so you've covered all your bases great insight said Unisani Doris well my last few words will be say negotiate negotiate that's just because something is listed at that price does not mean you must buy it at that price so at the moment is a, is a buyer's market which means uh, the buyers determine the price not the sellers even if an, an estate agent has listed a property at this price does not mean you have to buy it at that price mm. people don't realize that so negotiate negotiate view more than one property don't just take your first property you know and then compare the two uh, the two or the three properties and choose from uh, one of those so negotiate and negotiate and you'll get the best deal mm.